Let me tell you something that the Rusty Boys don't understand. They don't understand cash lines. Well, more specifically, they don't understand why a certain data structure might be bad for a cash. See, one of the things that I got in the comments on a previous Rust video is someone saying, I don't understand how a doubly linked list, the kind that the Rust standard library gives you, is going to hurt the cache performance. <clears throat> well, no, I guess you don't. Because a doubly linked list means you have a link to the next item, which every linked list basically has, a link to the previous item, which is what makes it a doubly linked list, and then the actual item itself. If it's a um, if it's a linked list where the data is in the list, otherwise a pointer to a piece of data. Uh, but either way, you've got some piece of information being carried with that doubly linked list. So the Rustations don't understand why doubly linked lists are bad for cache performance. If you're picking a linked list as a data structure, there is almost certainly a sequential nature to what you're doing. In fact, a linked list, typically what you're dealing with is you have something that you're going to iterate through and maybe you need to insert or delete items as you go and maybe you'll put things at the end or maybe you'll even put something at the beginning. But it's rare that you have a linked list that you actually need to spin backwards through beyond one item. It's way more efficient to just store an integer, a temporary pointer, to the previous item while you're working on the current item if you're going to need to do something to the previous item. Because the big disadvantage of a singly linked list is that you have to start at the beginning again if you need to find something that's prior to where you are now. You can't rewind the list. And this is why, probably, the Rust standard library gives you a doubly linked list by default. Because if you do need to go backwards, you can go backwards. Unfortunately, if you're making a big linked list, and especially if the linked list is just, you know, the link to the next item and a pointer, which is the worst case scenario because it's the smallest, then if you're making that kind of linked list, you probably don't need to go backwards, uh, at least not more than one item, and <clears throat> storing the extra pointer, sorry, it's rough out of here, <clears throat> storing the extra pointer is going to, basically, if you're 64-bit, and assuming that you have a cache line of 64 bytes, then storing an 8-byte pointer, an 8-byte pointer, and an 8-byte pointer, if, if the data is not in the list, uh, or if the data is more than, less than 8 bytes, whatever, um, that's 24 bytes instead of 16. That means you're storing 50% more data. That means that instead of what, I think I did the math, and they were like, you could fit 2,048 items in a typical 64-bit CPU level 1 cache, uh, data cache specifically. Um, instead of like 2,048, it's like 1,683 or something. Um, the point is you're going to be blowing out your CPU's cache lines way, way more often than you would normally be. Um, you, you would not be evicting all of this cache stuff if you didn't have that extra pointer in between. And there was only one scenario I could think of where the pointer that this doubly linked list offers that you don't need would actually not be a problem. And it requires that <clears throat> the doubly linked list store the, the previous pointer that you're not going to use at the end of all the data, which is not likely, um, that the allocations are not sequential. Most memory allocators try to allocate a big chunk for the program and then carve off sequential bits as you go for cache coherence reasons and for simple efficiency. Um, <clears throat> and then you would have to have, with these non-sequential allocations and the pointers at the end, all the data in between the next pointer and the previous pointer that you're trying to not take a hit from would have to be just the right size to drive the previous pointer off to a different cache line um, that no other data is on. Um, it, it, you basically would have to have all of these very unlikely things converge um, in which now when you load the next item in the list, you dereference that pointer and it loads the first 64 byte of the structure or whatever, that 56 bytes of it is data or less. You know, basically it lines up on a nice boundary and the next thing is not a yet another linked list item that gets pushed down eight more bytes by that unnecessary pointer. <clears throat> so you, you, you've got these stupid pointers that won't get out of the way. 
And I'm not surprised that Rust programmers, um, some of them at least, do not understand caches. A lot of C programmers exist when they first start out not understanding caches either. But the second you have, say, a data structure like a linked list, um, you know, it, like in my JDupes program, for example, there's this massive data structure called a file T. And a file T has everything. It, 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 it starts with the, the next pointer, and it's got several other pointers, and um, it's got a pointer to a directory name item where the file name is stored, and it's just, just tons of stuff. UID, GID, there's all these integers. It's a pretty fat data structure, and at the top of it is a pointer to the next item in the list. Because in practice, the way that the, um, the, way that the system works is it checks a file, and then it checks the next file against that file, and so on. And you just iterate through the list over and over and over again, checking each file against each other file, which is just how it has to work. That's that's just the way that it works. And uh, believe it or not, I've done some stuff to try and make it faster, and it just... It, honestly, it doesn't work very well if you reorder it past what it is. But I did reorder some items in the structure such that the cache coherence between things is better because certain functions only touch certain things. Like the stat function loads UID, GID, all that stuff. But if I'm using another function that doesn't care about that, like say we're not actually checking permissions, we don't need to worry about UID or GID or maybe maybe we don't need to worry about mode. I don't know. But if you reorder your structure such that only part of it gets loaded... You know, whenever cache lines load, they load 64 bytes at a time if it's 64 bytes wide. So if you can reorder your structure such that it loads quicker, then that's great. Um, Rust is often used as a crutch language by people who don't really know how to code very well and who want to feel special um, and like they're doing, they're better than C programmers. So it's not surprising that those personality types that have their ego tied to a friggin' programming language of some sort. Um, that their entire worldview somehow starts to fall into this. It's the same people that fall for, uh, like, social justice warrior, um, you know, far-left type rhetoric. It's, they're easily susceptible to these stupid social pressures, whereas us uh, sea chuds, we just don't care. We, I, I don't give a rat's ass if you look at my use of a language and you go, oh, he's a C programmer. What a loser. Well, I might be a loser, but you know what? I solved my own problem and I shared my solution with other people and, and it's been shared enough that it's in like every major Linux distribution out there. Um, and it's just something that I do for solving my own file management problems in C. And I don't need to rewrite it in Rust to feel like I'm a special good little boy. Um, I just get things done. And that's sort of the, the bigger discussion around C versus Rust is it has nothing to do with the language and everything to do with the cult around Rust. The cult around Rust is a bunch of fragile egos that if you attack Rust, they show up on a video like this and they downvote the crap out of it and leave all these comments saying how wrong, 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 wrong you've got to be because if you're not wrong, then all my worldview is shattered. But I'm over here like, if you take a dump all over C, well, I'm using it to get things done. I don't care what your opinion is of my hammer when I'm in the process of beating nails. I don't care what you think about my rowdy-ass Harbor Freight circular saw whenever I'm in the middle of cutting a piece of wood down to make another desk so that I can do some more work in my office. I really don't give a rat's ass about your opinion when I'm trying to get things done, and I'm actually getting things done. Um, I don't know if it's a real quote. It probably isn't. But one of my favorite Confucius say things is Confucius say, um, man who says it cannot be done should stop bothering the man who is doing it. I'm doing it. C programmers are doing it. We've been doing it for decades. Oh my God. And, and this isn't enough for another video, but I just wanted to die when I read this. And I think that they were just trying to be funny and go backwards a letter. But one guy actually showed up and said, uh, the C, uh, what do, what do uh, Rust programmers think about C programmers? Probably the same thing that, or, or what do C programmers think about Rust programmers? Probably the same thing B programmers thought about C programmers. Ah! Uh, Dennis Ritchie is rolling in his grave, bro. You know the same guy wrote B that wrote C, right? Like, there was BCPL, <clears throat> and then B kind of sort of came out of that. 
Eh. Uh, but then C was picked because it was uh, it was basically they started with Z, and as he iterated down, uh, made improvements, he lowered the letter, and the letter that he landed on when all the stuff was finished up and the language was polished and ready to go was C. Uh, or was B, rather. And then he made some improvements to it further, after it was golden, um, to add certain really nice features. Um, and once it was basically feature complete, after that, he incremented it back to C, because he's like, well, okay, we made it better, let's bounce back up. And that's how B and C came about. It's the same guy. So B programmers and C programmers probably didn't fight very much, because they're the same person, and I don't think that Dennis Ritchie was schizo. Anyway, uh, Rust is, um, Rust is a language that exists. I will not give an opinion on it here, but I will give an opinion on Rust programmers and their snobbery and their bad behavior online and their, um, weird far-left political psychosis. And for some reason, uh, being this way, means that somehow you just don't understand that a pointer you don't need in a structure that you're using makes the structure bigger and thus kills CPU cache performance. <sighs> why do we have to put up with these people? Really, seriously, why, why? What did I do in a previous life to have to put up with this dumb, dumb, bulls, 